Hey there, Taylor Elwood here. And so I thought today that I would talk a bit about something that I find to be very helpful, a process that I've used before and will undoubtedly use again, which is uh, the process of defining what you don't want in order to figure out what you do want. It sounds kind of counterintuitive. It's like, why would you want to figure out what you don't want in order to figure out what you do want? But I find that people often have an easier time figuring out what they don't like or what they don't want than, than, what, than figuring out what they do like or what they do want. And I'll give you this as an example. If you've ever been together with a group of friends and you know, you're, it's, it's time to figure out where to go to eat, you know, the, the question that actually gets asked is, where do you want to eat? And a lot of times people have trouble making up their minds. Why? You would think it would be so easy. Well, the fact of the matter is, when you're focusing on, on what do you want to eat, you know, people start to think about, well, what do I want to eat? What are the things that I would like to have? And it gets hard because then you're suddenly faced with a wide array of choices. But if you ask people, what don't you want to eat? It gets easier because a person can start to say, yeah, well, I don't feel like Mexican today. I don't really want to eat this or I don't like that or whatever else. And so it becomes easier to answer that question of what do you want? Because at that point, you've already figured out what you don't want. If you don't believe me, try it sometime. Um, you know, try it even with your partner or something like that. So in my case, I've been thinking a lot about what I don't want to do with the eccentric entrepreneur's business. Because I figure that's going to help me, help me recognize what I do want to do. And it actually has helped a lot. I, I, I'd say on Friday, on, on the drive to the job that I'm working at right now, I suddenly had this crystal clear realization that I ended up writing down, writing down, you know, when I got to work, you know, like, here's the things I want to do, but it was helped in large part by what I didn't want to do. So what don't I want to do? Well, I've decided I definitely don't want to teach people about marketing or sales. Um, it's not really my wheelhouse. It's not something I enjoy that much. And Honestly, in some ways, I kind of feel like with everything I've learned about marketing in the last year, it just comes off as just being really damn slimy and uncomfortable. It seems like you basically have to sell your soul in order to even try and make a buck. And that's just not me. I tried it that way and it, it sucked. So I don't want to teach people about that kind of stuff because I just think it's a load of BS at this point. You see, I mean, I mean, even on Facebook, I see all these videos of people just trying to sell stuff the entire time, you know, acting like super charismatically, super charismatic in a bullshit way. And it just really annoys me more than anything because it just feels fake. I don't feel like any of these people really care about my business or me. And I know that for a fact, because having taken some of these programs by some of these people who've offered that, what I've come away with is, okay, they're there to sell, but they're not really there to be with me and help me through this process. And that's one of the big reasons I signed up for this stuff. So I realize I don't want to do marketing and sales, that that's not my zone of genius. We're going to be talking about the zone of genius more in later videos. So then I've also thought about, well, do I want to do business plans? I mean, I'm good at business plans. You know, it's, it's something I've helped people with. But I realize now I really don't want to do business plans. Business plans are boring. And I think like this last year that one thing that I really struggled with is, oh, I've got to find something. I don't really want to do marketing and sales. Well, I'll settle for business plans. I've done those before. But honestly, I find business plans boring. I mean, if a customer came to me and said, hey, you know, you've been helping me with all this other stuff and I'd like to add a business plan in, I'd probably consider it, especially, especially in conjunction with what I want to do. But trying to get people to care about business plans is like trying to pull a tooth out of a horse's mouth. You're just going to get kicked a lot. It's certainly what seems to have happened, uh, you know, this past year. So I, I don't think business plans are the way to go either. Now, I do care, I do think, I, I do have some passion and interest in business processes. But what I really come away with is that if I want to do something, I really need to go back to what really speaks to me. And so for me, what I've come away with as a result of figuring out what I don't want to do is, are the things that I believe I want to do. I mean, one of them is that I really want to incorporate meditation practices into my business coaching. I want to help people figure out what their internal shit is and get it out of the way so that they can actually 
become better off at what they're doing. You know, I, I've always been good at getting into people's heads and figuring out, okay, here's what's not working and why, and here's what you can change about that. And it's a strength that I've kind of taken for granted, but it's something that I feel really passionate and excited about because when I can help people figure those kinds of things out, it makes my life and their lives easier. So I've been thinking about that a ton, and that's kind of the, the, the conclusion that I've pretty much come to is that that's something I should focus on more. Now, I haven't gotten to the point where I've really f refined this into a concrete message. I mean, this is something that really I've only been thinking about in the last week, quite honestly, and it's only in the last few days that it's really crystallized to any degree, and I'm sitting with it further. But I wouldn't have gotten there if I hadn't been willing to figure out what I didn't want to do with my business coaching. And really figuring out what I didn't want to do with my business coaching really had, really had me going to some places and realizing, you know, I really don't feel passionate about this. No wonder people weren't interested. I didn't care about it, so why should they? It was a little uncomfortable to face, but it was also a good thing because I had spent so much time trying to get this thing to work and it really wasn't working. And recognizing that helped me to Help me to be able to accept it and, 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 and start to make some changes. Now, some people would say, but Taylor, you can't always do what you want. You know, sometimes you just have to focus on what people need and everything else. And I would argue that, yeah, there's some truth to that. But at the same time, when, when you focus so much on what you think other people need and you ignore what you want to do, I think that you miss out on something crucial, which is the passion that you can bring to your business. When I look back at this last year, I didn't feel very passionate about it. I didn't care that much. So it's not surprising to me that things didn't work. I realized that after the point, after I've gotten, after I've been out of this for like, a, you know, a month or more. And it's really liberating because, I mean, I'm, I'm really coming at this from the perspective of, well, if I'm going to go ahead with eccentric entrepreneurs, this has to be something that I feel genuinely passionate about. And one of the other realizations I've had is that if I'm going to do this, I really have to set it up with some very strict boundaries in place because I want to continue to write and do other things that are important to me, but I don't want to spend a ton of time on marketing and sales and all that other stuff. I mean, this very well may end up just being a very part-time business, and I'm, I'm okay with that if I'm able to continue doing the things that I feel really passionate about. I do feel passionate about coaching people and saw, helping them solve their problems, but I realized that I don't want to solve the conventional problems of business. My the problems I want to solve are are okay. Yes, you're feeling overwhelmed. Well, let's 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 figure out what's really going on. Let's pop open that hood and and figure that stuff out and help you make some changes in in yourself internally, so that then those changes can be reflected in your environment around you. And then let's make changes to those environments instead of just saying, well. I've got the perfect marketing solution and that'll fix everything for you. Yeah. That just doesn't appeal to me at all. And I don't think it really works because having gone down that route myself and taken some of those marketing solutions, it didn't solve my problem. It just made things worse. Okay. So that's it for today. Just wanted to share with you. It's been a little while and uh, I'll catch you later.